Hi, everyone. Welcome to this information session on the Discovery Research Pre-K-12 program, shorthand DRK-12. My name is Joan Walker, and I am one of the co-leads of the DRK-12 program, and it's my pleasure to walk you through our new solicitation today, 23-596. If you are familiar with the DRK-12 program, there are some new features in this solicitation that I'd like to draw your attention to. If you are new to DRK-12, welcome. I hope that this information session is helpful in determining whether our program is a good fit for your work. I noted there were several changes in this new solution solicitation, I'll use this slide to point to one of the first important ones, which is the due date for proposals. The proposal due date this year is a bit later than in previous years. The due date is the second Wednesday in November. In this case of this year, that is November 8th. So I'll move on now to um, an overview of the information session and what I hope to cover and share with you. First, uh, I'll describe the DRK-12 program and project expectations. Then I'll quickly go through an overview of the NSF review process and proposal preparation guidance. Then I'll close out with some quick reminders and resources. I'd like to thank our resource center, DRK-12 Programs Resource Center cadre, the Community for Advancing Discovery, Research, and Education. Thank you, cadre, for your help in making this recording available. If you would like to subscribe for announcements that um, cadre shares on behalf of our program, you can do that by going to their website, which I've identified here, cadrek12.org. Today's information session is one part of a larger summer outreach plan. In addition to this recorded information session, there will be interactive webinars in July. The first one will be on July 20th, and that one will focus on the merit review criteria, our program strands and project types. The following webinar will be Tuesday, July 25th. That one will focus on technical support, including budgeting. Those will be interactive. We won't have any prepared presentations. The time will be spent answering your questions about these dimensions. There will be program, office, program officer office hours in August, and Cadre will share those dates and times as soon as they're available. And if you would like to share a one page concept paper or a project summary with us, you can do that anytime by sending it to our program inbox. I monitor that inbox and I'll be happy to uh, provide some feedback on your proposal. So there's this information session, interactive webinars on particular topics, program officer office hours where you can ask more individualized questions about your proposal and the opportunity for one page concept papers to receive feedback. And you can talk with a program officer as well. Cadre has some great additional resources that I'd like to draw your attention to. One is the NSF proposal toolkit. The other is a proposal development timeline. On the Cadre website, I encourage you if your proposal um, is interested in the space of DEIA for you to look at the Evidence Quality and Research Hub. This hub also offers resources related to research methods and a particular priority of the DRK-12 program in our new solicitation, Knowledge Translation. So again, I encourage you to check out that hub. There's also a video podcast um, hosted by two DRK-12 PIs who um, discuss the hidden curriculum in what they call a post-panel pop-off. So thanks for your interest in our program. And now we'll go ahead and uh, dig into the uh, content. The DRK-12 program is one of many programs within the Directorate for STEM Education. The Directorate for STEM Education has the mission of developing a diverse and well-prepared, 
U.S. STEM workforce, and a STEM literate general public. And it achieves this mission by investing in research and development in STEM education. Across EDU, three general dimensions or, or facets of work we look at are STEM learning and learning environments, broadening participation and institutional capacity, and STEM professional workforce development. DRK-12 is one program within the Division of Research on Learning. DRK-12 is unique and important. DRK-12 is the only NSF program whose primary purpose is to support applied research and development at the pre-K-12 level of formal education in all areas of STEM. And in this way, we're essential to all future workforce development and education level uh, initiatives at the post-secondary level. We invite proposals that address immediate challenges facing pre-K STEM education, pre-K-12 STEM education, and proposals that anticipate what the pre-K-12 STEM ecosystem may look like in the future. And I pull a quotation from the solicitation here to underscore this point that we seek proposals that demonstrate a well-rounded understanding of the day-to-day -day work and expertise of educators in formal education, the talents and of needs of our nation's diverse students and their communities, and national, state, or district priorities. We also invite proposals that advance opportunities for all pre-K-12 students and teachers to develop their STEM talent. Here is a summary of important features of our new solicitation. This is called out in the solicitation itself at the top under the header of revisions. I'm gonna go through these quickly now and in a bit more detail later. The most important, I think, change to our new solicitation is the addition of a new project type. We have added partnership development. These projects are up to one year in duration with a budget of up to $100,000. The goal here is to develop partnerships between researchers and pre-K-12 schools. Project activities can include, but are not limited to, stakeholder meetings, project planning and explorations, regarding how each member of the partnership can be positioned to advance formal pre-K-12 STEM teaching and learning. I'll say a bit more about this project type later. Another important revision is our expression of a programmatic commitment to research in the teaching strand, teaching as part of the STEM workforce development of this country. If one way to think about it is, is if prior solicitations focused on research on teaching, this solicitation encourages proposals that it involves research for teachers, not research on teaching, but research for teachers, with teachers, by teachers, co-design, knowledge mobilization, knowledge translation, working with and uh, demonstrating respect for the expertise of our teaching workforce. A third important change is an emphasis on dissemination plans. Uh, dissemination has always been a key part of effective proposals. Here we want to see people um, step up in terms of not only identifying the audience that would be served by the information that would be shared, but also allowing that audience a two-way dynamic for um, engaging with the research team. We also encourage the use of metrics to track hits, downloads, views, something that gives an indicator of the reach. Um, and we want to see that a thoughtful dissemination plan has associated communication costs in its budget. Dissemination plans are important because they are just one critical component of knowledge mobilization. Knowledge mobilization being also knowledge translation or the reciprocal exchange of knowledge between fields, stakeholders such as researchers and practitioners. Knowledge mobilization efforts should be data generating, knowledge generating, hypothesis driven, um, 
Knowledge mobilization efforts are not dissemination. They are not the same thing. Knowledge mobilization is the effort to understand further how an approach is working by taking that approach across contexts, across levels, across disciplines. In our new solicitation, we have moved assessment from a project strand where it previously was to a project type. And we have updated all project type descriptions in an effort to provide more clarity about the different kinds of research and development that our program supports. I'd like to take a moment now to invite you to serve as an NSF reviewer, particularly a DRK-12 program reviewer. If you are a member of senior personnel on a proposal that will be submitted to the current competition, you are not eligible to serve as a reviewer. However, we encourage you to um, make this opportunity available. We rely heavily on our review panels. I'm particularly interested in inviting practitioners, school leaders, classroom teachers to be reviewers. Please draw their attention to this opportunity. They can send an email indicating you or anyone else who's interested can send an email indicating your interest to be a reviewer to our program inbox. And it's helpful if you include a brief sketch of your expertise, such as I'm a teacher educator, and I do mixed methodology, I'm very interested in language acquisition as it relates to STEM uh, education, whatever it is that gives us a general sense of uh, who you are. The benefits of reviewing are many. Uh, one is to provide service. This is a paid service. Another is to understand the review process, the NSF review process. And if you're new to DRK-12, before you submit a proposal, reviewing is a great way to understand our specific program requirements. Reviewing is also a great way of a uh, form of professional development and networking. The workload for reviewers typically involves reading and commenting on six to eight proposals. We expect substantive written reviews. We provide guidance on how to pr provide those reviews. And you would participate in a two-day interactive panel. There are virtual and in-person options. Thank you for considering this as an opportunity. All right, this slide I'll talk about the program's goals, objectives, and outcomes. The overarching goal of DRK-12 is to catalyze research and development that enhances all pre-K-12 teachers and students' opportunities to engage in high quality learning experiences in any field of STEM. We achieve this goal through several more particular objectives. One is the goal of building knowledge, building knowledge around how to develop pre-K-12 students and teachers, content knowledge, practices, and skills where STEM is concerned. Another is to support collaborative partnerships among STEM education researchers and practitioners, school leaders. And another goal, I mean, objective is to build the field of STEM education. And we do that by supporting knowledge syntheses and the development of novel and robust assessments of teacher and student learning engagements and skills. These objectives are all reflected in our project types, which I'll review in more detail in a moment. Outcomes of DRK-12 projects. These can include promising, evidence-based products and methods that can be used by others to support the success of all teachers and all students. Examples of outcomes include, but are not limited to, curriculum, teaching and research tools, and models of collaboration. The anatomy of our program, three basic categories. We have strands, project types, and funding levels. When you're submitting a proposal, you need to declare whether it belongs to the teaching strand or the learning strand. In a moment, I'll describe those in more details in ways that I hope help you separate these two intertwined dimensions. We have six research project types, exploratory, design and development, impact, implementation and improvement, measurement and assessment, and syntheses. These are all research project types. We also support other project types, two other project types, including the new partnership development and workshops and conferences. With regard to the duration of a project or a funding level, project types 
the research project types, the six research project types are not tied to funding levels. There are three funding levels available. Level one, the cap is $450,000 $450, and a three-year duration. Level two is capped at $3 million and has a four-year duration. Level three is capped at $5 million and has a five-year duration. Your research project, if it's exploratory through measurement and assessment, is eligible for any one of these three funding levels. I encourage you to map out your design, think about the resources that you need to execute that design to its highest level of quality, and then see what that number is and determine the funding level that way. You do not have to ask for the minimum. You do not have to ask for the maximum. Um, we do have a specific funding level for some project types. Let me describe those. Syntheses. Syntheses are not included and the funding levels above. They have their own level of $600,000 a year and a three-year duration, up to three years, up to $600,000. Partnership development is up to $100,000 for one year. And workshops and conferences have a limit of up to $200,000 and a one-year duration. $200,000 represents a doubling of the previous budget. Um, this signals our commitment and uh, desire to receive these kinds of proposals. About the program strands, is your project a better fit for teaching or learning? Here's how you might determine that. The aim of the teaching strand is to contribute to a science of teaching that addresses the complexity of how people facilitate other people's STEM learning. The development of a science of teaching akin to the science of learning that has been developed. That is the work of the teaching strand. The focus is on teacher knowledge, teacher beliefs, and teacher practices as the unit of analysis. Projects in the teaching strand can also include student learning outcomes, but those should be framed as evidence of the innovative approaches effectiveness. They are secondary. The focus is on teacher knowledge, teacher beliefs, and teacher practices. Some questions to think about for proposals, all proposals to the teaching strand. How does the proposed innovation or approach align with current STEM education frameworks? And how is the innovation uh, or approach an improvement? And why and how would it lead to improved outcomes for teachers and students? So these are the essential questions for teaching stand proposals. I'd like to underscore a note in the teaching strand, which is that budgets should offer fair and meaningful remuneration for teacher participants. Carefully consider the expertise that teachers are bringing to your project and compensate them accordingly. The learning strand. The aim of the learning strand is to provide all students with STEM learning experiences that, that prepare them for these things, including an understanding and use ability to use scientific scientific information, the ability and interest to serve their communities and empowering them, enabling them, facilitating their ability to participate in future education and workforce opportunities. The focus here is on student learning and other student characteristics as the unit of analysis. Teacher data, such as teacher professional development and other related outcomes can be assessed or included in the project, but they are secondary to the innovation's efforts to support student outcomes. Again, same essential questions. How does the proposed work in learning align with current frameworks, with current understandings of child and youth development, and evidence of how students engage with and learn STEM content? We also want to know how does the proposed work constitute an improvement relative to students' current opportunities and how and why is that improvement happening? Now I'm gonna step through very quickly the project types. Recall, we're going to do an interactive Q&A in July on this topic. So you'll have an opportunity then to ask more questions. I hope that this gives you a sense of the range of things that we in, invite and the kinds of project type that might be uh, the one you're proposing. Project type exploratory. 
exploratory proposals establish the basis for a subsequent design and development intervention. This is an exploration of relationships among design features and outcomes. It must have a conceptual framework or a theory of action. While you may not be ready to declare the mechanisms at play, the goal is to articulate what mechanisms may be in play and determine their relationships. So in that case, you need to provide evidence of factors that are associated with learning outcomes. Exploratory projects can bloom into design and development projects. The goals of a design and development project are to articulate a particular problem um, of interest. The importance of that problem must be identified. You should also describe how your ideas, I said earlier, relates to but differs from existing practice and how and why it should lead to an improvement. A strong theoretical and empirical justification for a design and development proposal is essential. We need to be able to clearly understand what features or components are going to be invested in and how and why those features should lead to the intended outcomes. A well explicated theory of change or logic model is essential. Design and development proposals may bloom further into an impact study. Impact studies expand the evidence of promise from previous work to provide more rigorous evidence of the strength of a STEM education innovation or approach to achieve its intended outcomes. Two ways that you might achieve impact is efficacy or effectiveness studies. Efficacy being impact under ideal conditions, effectiveness being impact under normal conditions. Impact studies should include evidence from experimental or quasi-experimental designs. I encourage you to read the section in this proposal and uh, in the solicitation more carefully and contact us if you have questions about your project's design as it relates to whether it is an example of impact research. Another project type is implementation and improvement. The aim of this project type is to strengthen the capacity of an organization to reliably produce valued STEM education outcomes for diverse groups of students. And this way, implementation and improvement is central to our interest in knowledge mobilization. Implementation and improvement studies require deep engagement and collaboration between researchers and practitioners on problems of practice that are co-defined and that are of value to both researchers and education agencies, such as a school district or community of schools. Implementation and improvement projects must clearly articulate the shared goal of the collaborators, the conceptual framework guiding the implementation and improvement, and the methodological approach for the study. A range of methods may be uh, chosen, there are many to choose from. However, whatever method is chosen, chosen, it should align to the project goals. Again, please attend carefully to the full section in the solicitation and feel free to contact a program officer about this. Another research project type is measurement and assessment. These proposals focus on the development of assessment for STEM teaching and learning or of STEM teaching and learning. In that way, we're interested in the development of both formative and summative assessments. Proposals should specify which STEM constructs they aim to assess, the target population, and the intended use of the measurement instrument. The approach for developing the instrument and its protocols must be clearly defined in detail. A plan for demonstrating how the measure will allow for valid and reliable inferences of the constructs being assessed is critical. Fairness must also be considered. The final research project type that the DRK-12 program is interested in is syntheses. And this relates to our program aim of building the field of STEM education by supporting knowledge syntheses in the same way that measurement and assessment projects build the field of STEM education. They're important research infrastructure. Syntheses can be in the form of a literature review, 
qualitative or mixed methods metasyntheses or meta-analyses. Synthesis proposals should demonstrate a command of the breadth and depth of the literature on the question, issue, or topic of interest and use that knowledge to frame a proposed scope of work. Please see the solicitation for technical requirements for meta-analyses and meta-syntheses. Reminder, synthesis proposals have a budget of up to $600,000 and a three-year duration. Two other project types that are not original research project types that are welcomed by the program include partnership development. I'm going to talk about this in a bit more detail here. Again, up to $100,000 and one year in duration, the goal of partnership development is to create connections and co-design among district and school administrators, teachers, researchers, and other community stakeholders. The goal is here is to recognize partnerships as critical infrastructure in research and development in formal education settings. All partnership and development projects must include a pre-K-12 school partner and researchers. Proposals should articulate how and why they seek to intentionally build new or to expand existing collaborations and how that will contribute to or be related to the aims of the DRK-12 program. Proposals should provide a clear plan or framework for establishing the partnership, relationship development, for sharing power, making decisions, and identifying future proposed projects that ensure reciprocal benefits to both partners, to all partners. Proposals must have, these are not research proposals, but they must have a formal mechanism to assess the project's progress and describe the steps that will be taken to provide feedback on processes and how to make improvements in the team's functioning. Because these are not research proposals, the project description is much shorter. It is limited to eight pages rather than the 15 page narrative for a research project. Workshops or conferences are another project type that the program supports. These are up to $200,000 and have a one year duration. Workshops or conferences proposals can be submitted anytime. Let me say that again. All project proposals except workshops or conferences are due November 8th. If you're entertaining a workshop or conference proposal, you can submit it anytime. Proposals should focus on an issue of importance to DRK-12 program priorities. They should also clearly state how the activities will result in or contribute to the DRK-12 program's goals. For instance, the activities might lead to a publication, a future proposal on research or partnership development plans. Convenings that focus on facilitating the reciprocal exchange of knowledge and expertise between researchers and pre-K-12 education professionals are particularly welcome. Other areas of interest include the integration of advanced and emerging technologies and supporting pre-K-12 STEM education's capacity to respond to emerging societal grand challenges. We encourage proposers in this project type to consider multi-stage convenings. When we think of the word conference, we might think of a compressed two to three day experience. We want you to think about following the idea that learning takes time, a distributed model that allows for time for collective knowledge building and diverse modes of participation, meaning Convenings that take advantage of both virtual and in-person as settings for knowledge development. There are specific guidance for this type of project and you should consult that in the solicitation and in our proposal uh, preparation guide, the PAPG. All right, so that concludes the first portion of this uh, information session. Now I'm gonna turn to proposal preparation and review process given you a sense of what DRK-12 is. Now we're gonna think a little bit more about a proposal in general. 
NSF policies and procedures are articulated in the Proposal and Awards Policies and Procedure Guide, which we affectionately refer to as the PAPG. This is updated annually. The new PAPG 23-1 is currently in effect. All policies about your proposal preparation are in the PAPG. I encourage you to read it. Um, if you are confused by it, contact a program officer so we can help you. All proposals must have a SAM.gov unique entity identifier. This means that the organization submitting the proposal is actively registered with the federal government and is in a position to accept federal funds. If you are a new organization, if you are new to NSF and you plan to propose, I strongly encourage you to get a SAM uh, registration as soon as possible. This can, project, this uh, process can take some time. All proposals must be submitted using research.gov or grants.gov. But again, eligibility, any organization is eligible to apply. Individuals cannot apply for DRK-12 funding. All organizations must be registered in SAM.gov. Again, please, if you are new to NSF and considering a proposal, Register with SAM.gov as soon as possible. That is because you need to demonstrate that acceptable account accounting mechanisms are in place. If the proposal is recommended for funding, the funding can be received. Within the PAPG and within the DRK-12 solicitation, there are specific guides for proposal preparation and submission. Um, I'm going to step through some of those in this section. There are required elements in section five of the proposal, in section five of the program solicitation. In section five of the program solicitation, you will see these required elements articulated. Let me be very clear on the cover sheet, what it is you're proposing, where it's going, the funding level, duration of the project, and anticipated start date. You'll need to provide a project summary. I'll go over those components in just a moment. The project description is a 15 page narrative. This is the essence, the most important part of the proposal and it should include the following things. A statement of the importance of the problem. Any results from prior NSF support that, that you the PI have received. Project research design, that is what is your project type? What kind of mechanisms are in place to assess success? What is the communication or dissemination plan? What is the team's expertise? And what are the potential broader impacts or societal benefits of the work? Outside this narrative, there are several other components that need to be included that include references, the budget and budget justification, a statement of the facilities, equipment, and other resources that are available to the team during the execution of the project. Senior personnel documents. There have been some changes in this, so I'm gonna go over those in uh, specific detail momentarily. A data, management, a data management plan that explains how you will both secure the data and share this publicly funded project results. So data management is twofold, security and sharing. Postdoctoral mentoring plan, if your project involves a postdoctoral scholar, we'll want to see a mentoring plan that describes how the project will help this individual grow. And there may be room for other supplementary documentation, which I will go over now. The project summary is an overview. It's the first thing I read when I read a proposal. It gives you a sense of the essence of the project. We ask that you clearly identify in the summary, the strand, is it teaching or learning, and the project type. For example, you might say, this exploratory project in the teaching strand seeks to, or this partnership development proposal in the teaching strand would. We also want you to identify clearly the STEM discipline or disciplines that are engaged in the project and the grade or age levels um, that of student participants. You might also point to other notable participant characteristics in the teaching strand, for example, if you're serving first year teachers, you'll want to call that out. 
if you're in the learning strand and you're serving students with autism, you want to note that. Other project characteristics that are notable, you might draw attention to who, if it's a collaborative work, who the partners are. If, and you might also draw attention to the geographic setting. For example, is it serving students and teachers in rural communities, urban communities? Other kinds of details or project characteristics such as that are important in the overview. We also want to see a clear statement of the project's intellectual merit and a third section that states the project's broader impacts. So you must include separate statements on each of these two criteria. I'll go over the um, intellectual merit and broader impacts later in this session. The mechanism to assess success. This means that this is something separate. You have a research project or you have a partnership development or you have a workshop and conference proposal. We want to know that your proposal also describes a project specific external review that provides feedback to you on the project itself. This is separate from the research that may be done. The review could be done by an external review panel or an advisory board or a third party evaluator. The external criteria review should be independent and rigorous. This is required because otherwise it's not going to be clear how the review can influence the project's activities and improve the quality of its findings. So successful proposals where this mechanism to assess success or concern will describe the expertise of the external reviewer, explain how that expertise relates to the specific proposal goals and objectives, and specify how the PI will re both report share and use the results of the external critical review. Proposals can include, include supplementary documents. These can include brief letters of collaboration. Be careful not to include attachments with these letters and be sure that these are letters stating that collaboration will follow. These are not testimonials or um, praise statements for the project's work. There are simple statements saying, should this proposal be funded, I agree to perform the duties as described in the proposal. There are a letter stating that the collaboration is in place. We also wanna see a list of personnel on the proposal. We wanna see your data management plan, and we want to see a postdoc mentoring plan. Do not include any other documents, please, as this may result in your proposal being returned without review. The budget. The budget should be consistent with the level of work, the scope of work that you need to do to conduct the research or development or other project type to the best of its ability. You do not have to request the maximum amount. Another thing to note about the budget is two months salary cap. If you are a faculty member in a higher education institute on a tenure, tenure track appointment, you may request no more than two months of salary unless you have a clear justification for that. If you have questions about the budget, remember we're going to do a budget webinar on Tuesday, July 25th, but you can send questions to the program. Um, and I encourage you to work with your um, collaborators and your Office of Sponsored Research on developing your project budget. Remember, Cadre has resources as well. Documents for all senior personnel. You must include three documents for each member of your senior personnel involved in the proposal. These three things include a bio sketch, which can now be up to three pages, current and pending support statement for both foreign and domestic support, a statement of your collaborators and other affiliations. You must use the current NSF approved templates Here's the URL to a page that describes uh, and it provides a link to these templates. You can also see the full requirements for these documents in the PAPG chapter two. Submissions that do not use the required temp templates may be returned without review. So please be sure that you are using these new templates. Other reasons for returning without review could include violations of formatting according to the PAPG similarity between the proposal and a previously submitted proposal, 
if you submitted a proposal and it was declined, we will do a similarity check to make sure that this proposal has been substantially changed. And um, so please be sure to modify your proposal when you're resubmitting it in ways that make the work better. There, another reason you could be returned without review is a failure to address the merit review criteria of intellectual merit and broader impact in the one page project summary including unauthorized documents in the supplementary document section, as I mentioned, may result in return without review. If you have a postdoc in the budget, but there's no postdoc mentoring plan, that will cause a problem. So will not including a data management plan. The NSF proposal review process. In a nutshell, there are three phases to the proposal review process. Phase one is when the opportunity is announced. The DRK-12 program solicitation was published at the end of May. We're required to give 90 days. We have given more than that amply um, for the field to respond and to submit a proposal. The proposal due date is November 8th. Remember, if you are writing a workshop or conference proposal, you can submit any time. Phase two involves once the proposals are submitted, program officers, begin selecting reviewers, organizing peer review panels, using the panel's recommendation and feedback to form their own recommendation, and then forwarding that recommendation to our division director for their review. That is phase two, the internal proposal review processing section. This can take up to six months from the date of submission until the date that you hear back about your proposal. Phase three, is when things move to our business office. The proposals that we recommend on their scientific basis are reviewed by the business office. This is where your SAM.gov registration comes into play and the award is finalized. Again, I'll use this time to say, if you are not a member of senior personnel on a grant that will be submitted this fall, we welcome your participation in this process as a reviewer. NSF's merit review criteria, there are two, intellectual merit and broader impacts. Intellectual merit is the capacity of the proposal to advance knowledge. Broader impacts is the potential for a project to benefit society. All, all of projects are publicly funded and it's important that they give back. So questions to think about when you're addressing merit review criteria. Is the proposed activity potentially transformative? Intellectually, this is very important to scientific progress. In terms of broader impacts, maybe you're making new ground in knowledge dissemination. Research plans, we're looking for very well-reasoned, well-organized and sound rationales. We also want to know that this is the right team to execute the proposed work. Is the requisite expertise present in the personnel? We also want to know, do those personnel have adequate resources to conduct their work? Some things to think about for developing a stronger proposal. Does the concept align with the program to which you are submitting? Is the proposed work grounded in relevant research? Have you addressed the NSF merit review criteria? And some notes about writing avoiding jargon, thinking about the writing style, tone and content, getting to the point, making sure it's clear who, what, when, where, how, and why, and the so what, what will we know, and how will society benefit, how will science be better at the end of this project, and a reader-friendly format. Here, some, a tip I see in very well-constructed proposals are visual representations. Proposals contain an extreme amount of complex information. Compressing those into visual representations, tables, figures, models, are a real service to the reader. So as they're reading through the narrative, they can come back to these touchstones to keep their thoughts and, and the logic of your proposal in mind. You might be wondering, is my proposal focused on something that's important to NSF? So I will in now talk about priorities for the DRK-12 program as they are expressed in what we call Dear Colleague Letters. Dear Colleague Letters are not new funding opportunities. 
Rather, they call the field's attention to existing funding opportunities or programs like DRK-12 that accept proposals in particular areas of interest. There are four D Dear Colleague letters that I'll uh, point to in this information session. The first is one I've mentioned already, knowledge mobilization. There is a DCL out now on supporting knowledge mobilization for both formal and informal STEM teaching and learning. Participating programs include DRK-12, our core research program, advancing informal STEM learning, and the ITEST program. Another Dear Colleague letter focuses on microelectronics education. Dear Colleague 23-097 focuses on artificial intelligence in K-12 education in both formal and informal settings. And while it's a couple of years old, our Dear Colleague letter 21-114 points to the importance of improving STEM teaching and learning and workforce development for persons with disabilities. I'll also note that the program welcomes proposals focused on teaching and learning in any STEM field and on priorities identified in the National Science Foundation strategic plan. All right, we're in the final section. Thank you for your attention. I'm gonna wrap us up with some quick reminders and resources. First, this information session is supplemented by a set of interactive webinars, PO office hours in August. Those dates are to be determined. You can subscribe for, an, for announcements about this from our resource center cadre. You can send a one-page concept paper or format it as a project summary anytime to our program inbox. And I encourage you to look at these additional resources on cadre's website. I will extend again the invitation to serve as a reviewer. We are particularly interested in having teachers on board as reviewers for our proposals, especially those in the teaching strand. We welcome uh, all early career and distinguished professors, uh, the range of, of expertise um, in formal education, school leaders, practitioners. We welcome all of you. And here's how to submit your interest as an NSF reviewer. But remember, if you're a senior personnel on a proposal submitted to this year's competition, you cannot serve. We will screen you out. Other fundings and op uh, opportunities and programs. In addition to DRK-12, you might be working in informal STEM learning, in which case ASL, Advancing Informal STEM Learning Program, will be of interest. If you're an early career scholar, we draw you to uh, our career program. If you work with undergraduates, you might look at our IUS, Improving Undergraduate STEM Education Program. If you are working in the space of organizations and structures that perpetuate systemic racism, our Racial Equity and STEM Program may be of interest to you. And if you are working with teachers, our Robert Noyce Teacher Scholarship Program may be of interest to you. It has both scholarship and research components. If you're not sure of your project's fit with these or other programs, you can email a program officer. Um, all of these programs have an it project inbox, uh, program inbox and may list individual program officers that you can contact. Thank you so much for your attention and for participation in this uh, information session. And I wish you all the best in preparing your proposal. And I look forward to seeing you at a future event. Take care.